Well, let's let's get down to drawing our bird here, and um, we want to do him a fairly decent size. And I gave you the far the more so you could see more of the environment that he was in. You know the 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 old pool waiting pool for the birds at the zoo with all the the leaves and rocks and stuff falling down around it. And then I just kind of zoomed in on him a little bit. He's a little bit out of focus, but that's okay. I don't. There's not a lot that we need for a lot of detail in him anyway. Um, but it gives you a sense of the values in there. Um, you can see the details on, his, on you know some of the feathers and stuff. And there's quite a bit in here. Um, you know that, that's kind of interesting how these little feathers line up and, and make these little marks. And then these are uh, a different texture. They're kind of broken up more. So we'll start off. Uh, with drawing him and what I want you to do is you know once you get him sketched out um, let's do this um, before we just dive in to this what I want you to do is I want you to do three or four thumbnail drawings of him kind of using the ideas that we just used but not you know make it your own somehow you know don't just kind of uh, repeat you know what I did before, okay? Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to—I want you to do a couple thumbnails of our stork here, and you look at both reference photos. And what we want to do is we just want to do um, three or four quick versions of this. So you might just—you know—you might try starting off by just drawing. Your rectangle for your page and these can be quick they don't have to be anything fancy so we'll start by by just drawing our little guy here so if you're ever if you're ever working on your own stuff and you you decide that you want to do some thumbnails the first thumbnails you do can just be really kind of quick and and messy. They don't have to be anything fancy at all. And so I've drew, I've I've made him a little bit smaller in my frame this time. And I'm going to play around with the with a couple of these different compositional ideas. I really like the last one I did. So maybe I'll play around with with uh, kind of welding him into an environment here. But we'll break it up. We'll make it a little bit different. So maybe this part is is back here and then there's another part that kind of comes down in a few places and, and connects back into that so there's a little broken spot of light there here's one idea um, you could change. You could you could do instead of doing it landscape. You could try one portrait. Okay, and this is really up to you. This is going to be your your version of of all of this. So um, you could do something where you you zoom really kind of zoom in on his head here and uh, make it more about this part of his body. And maybe you really like those feathers up through here and and this. And maybe we just kind of suggest there's a leg or two stepping in there. I don't know. And with thumbnails, you can let one idea kind of lead you into another. Um, and it's really just kind of time to uh, play with with some ideas. So maybe I go back to that idea of contrasting values and I have some of that those leaves or leaves or whatever they are come down and frame his head a little bit and then maybe there's an open space there and then we do a little shape welding kind of thing back here. So
you know, and then maybe those two ideas lead you to a third one that's somewhere in between. So maybe, maybe I like the idea of being zoomed in a little bit more. And I like the idea of having a little bit more of the back showing. But for whatever reason, I don't really care about you know, the legs too much here. So maybe the legs actually kind of become part of the grasses down here, and those can act to, to frame some of that. And So from this stage, what I would do if I was going to do a more um, uh, completed work of this is I would take one of these and I would do an in-between in stage. I would take one of these thumbnails, I would probably make it a little bit bigger, clean it up a little bit more um, so that there aren't things I just kind of dismiss. I have taken, uh, and I, you've probably heard this story, I have taken sketches like this and done, you know, major paintings where, I, you know, they were supposed to be very nice and finished. And I'll, you get yourself into trouble if you just go from a sketch like this. Because what happens is these little squiggles like this that just kind of trail off into nothing, they work fine in a thumbnail sketch. But what you, when you get into a painting, um, those have to become something. You know, unless your painting is very much a sketchy painting, all those little shapes and squiggles have to mean something later. So that's by that's where taking and going that the step in between where now you're gonna do a little bit more refined drawing of this before you actually, you know, do do your painting or your finished piece. Okay, your finished drawing. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to pick one of those. I don't care which one, um, one of your thumbnails. Um, and alright. So we're gonna I'm gonna start by Sketching him out. And I'm going to do this a little bit more seriously this time. We want a little bit nicer version. So I'm actually going to look at the reference photo this time. So we're starting with, uh, again, you want to find the structure here.
So we're just breaking everything down into shapes. Alright, so there's my basic sketch that I'm going to fill, start filling in here. 
And with these, you can you can do more with value. You know, we don't have to just do this black and white. We we can do much more value in this.
So I'm just kind of blocking in some of the values. Um, and then I'll start to build those up a little bit later. And And you can see down here in the bottom, I hope, <laughs> sometimes this reflects a lot. So you can see here where this really dark feather is, is I'm starting to play with value a little bit now. So while it's still, while it's still kind of tied into that shadow, I've lightened the background up just a little bit around it so that I don't lose that feather completely. So you can play with it that way too. You can, you can make some things darker and lighter even though they're they're still in shadow. So um, I'll have a video of this um, in a day or so um, just to kind of make sure that everybody that had any technical difficulties got it and uh, be a good review. I'll send you the link to that.
trying to get a feel of how this works so that we can uh, use it in our, our drawings and paintings. So as I get into the face here, I want to I want to slow down a little bit, take a little bit more time. As finished drawings go, I want this to be more. Um, I want it to be more of a, a, a good study, um, so that I could do something more with it later. It doesn't have to be a, a real finished piece, but I want to make sure that I work out my idea enough that I can do something more with it. And if along the way it happens to be something that I, I like enough that I want to uh, to call finished or, or whatever, I could I could work on it a little bit more, or I could um, just slap a mat on it and call it good and hang it on the wall. So I really like this this open space here, but I think it's a little too empty. So I'm just going to put in a slight value and let that kind of trail back in here. And uh, I'll probably blend that in here just so it uh, It would probably, if I did, was doing this as a painting, that would just be a light color in through there. And that would help separate it just a little bit from my, uh, my stork. And just 
a little bit of shading here and there. And I'll use a little bit of a blending stub to even some of this out, take away some of the, the white and scratchiness. So the, I'm using that blending stub now, and that's really letting me kind of play around with um, how I introduce the background value into the stork here. And it lets me kind of work those areas together a little bit. His knee got a little control there.
So I'm gonna I've I've finally left behind the HB pencil here, and I'm moving into the 2B and uh, trying to clean some stuff up and, and darken some things down. So the drawing that I have here, um, it's more or less finished as far as I'm concerned for, for this. Um, and I could probably take this and use this for a painting. Um, I'd want to have good reference though to kind of support it. Uh, maybe, because like I said, you know, this, this out here where I just kind of like trailed all this off into this, this hazy gray. 
that could come back to haunt me later because it, it probably works just enough in my drawing to get me in trouble. Um, so if I was to, let's say I did this in watercolor um, and I just kind of had a, a light colored sky and then this was some kind of light colored marshy thing in the background, I'm guessing that it probably won't work real well. Uh, it'll need something more back here and probably if I just took the time and did this and just came in and made just kind of a, a generic tree line back here doesn't have to be a lot but just did something like that that will work much better when it comes time to paint um, or to do a finished drawing and this is probably the stage I would probably leave off at. Now I might I might take this and I might um, well probably what I would do is I would I would either take tracing paper to this or I would blow it up on the copier and then then uh, use a light box and go back and, and work out more of the detail. Um, that way I'm not running into stuff that I might have left out or forgot at some point. Um, it's just anything you can do to kind of make life easier when you actually get into the painting process. Especially if you're doing watercolor. Um, because because watercolor is... Um, hi Nancy. <laughs> We're trying a different device. Because watercolor um, there's so many variables anyway. Anything that I can do to work that out ahead of time um, is going to save me in the painting process. It's going to be one less thing to think about. Yeah. Okay.